Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to welcome you, Lord Parker, uh, and thanks a lot for coming on the show. We really do appreciate your time. Um, I'd like to discuss with you your article you had published in the Financial Times last week um, entitled The Debt Crisis, The Final Solution. Now, this uh, this article has, has, has created an awful lot of uh, negative feedback and ridicule on your part. It has to be said partially from me on a personal level. And uh, I just... For the, for the benefit of the viewers that uh, have not read this article, I wonder if you could just run, run us through your theories and uh, we can discuss it afterwards. Of course, of course. It's very simple and based on a principle that I have advocated ever since I became involved in politics, and that is, if you have a problem, don't try to solve it. Just get rid of it. So it follows, we have a global debt crisis. So cancel all debt. All countries, all people, everything. Nobody owes anything. Everybody owns everything they have at a given time yet to be announced. Well, you know that's ridiculous. No more sir. ridiculous than borrowing more money to solve the debt crisis, which seems to be the only thing being discussed by our fools that are running Europe at the moment. No, it's the only way. Start all over again with absolutely no credit. That'll get the Jews scratching their heads, eh? <laughs> the moment the first credit deal happened in around 500 BC, artificial and indeed infinite economic growth was born. And voila, this is where it has got us. Buggered. Things have no true value if you don't actually own them and work for them. And I believe that if there is no credit, one would be surprised how little one needs or wants. Or what you need or want will be because it's necessary for one's survival. And what we have at the moment is a market economy whose sole result is so that everyone ends up sitting down eating shit food that they have no idea what it contains, and watching shit TV that eliminates the necessity for actually having a life. The whole purpose of business is to entertain people. That's why there's so many mindless dickheads around these days. That's why they should stop making films, you see. What are you talking about, sir? Did you know that the film industry is the most environmentally polluting and wasteful industry in the world? No. Well, it is. Have you any idea how many tons of highly toxic chemicals are used to process cine film every year? No, sir, I don't. Over 20 million tons, all of which ends up being dumped in the environment. The film industry is nothing more than an unstoppable machine vomiting out mindless drivel for the sole purpose of entertaining lazy, overweight morons. That's what it is. Hundreds, nay, thousands of people, all dressed in a certain way that they think makes them look interesting, are running around wasting oxygen, making films, hoping that some idiot will pay to watch them. And when it's all done, everybody says, fabulous film, or what a load of shit. In the meantime, millions of dollars that could have been used to feed a small nation have been wasted. And all those bloody, pompous, ego, junky film stars floating around, adopting black children and sucking off the Dal Dalai Lama, are trying to save the planet. Well, I'll tell you, there is actually nothing wrong with the planet, and it would be a far better place if you didn't make your stupid fucking films in the first place. Then maybe ancient cultures that have magically survived for thousands of years without the aid of an iPhone will stop seeing what is presented to be the hippity-hop, MTV, celebrity-infected Western culture that doesn't actually exist, and aspire to it, with the aid of an unrepayable credit. You see my point? So, no more movies, huh? That's a real pity. And, um, well, but all is not lost. This opens up an entirely new art form I call blind cinema. Not an entirely new concept, but a dashing good idea. You know those descriptive movie soundtracks they make for blind people? Actually, blind people make me feel quite nervous. It's almost like you know, they know something that I don't. It's funny, really. Still, that's by the by. The beauty of blind cinema is, of course, that you can still use the actual cinema. You just sit everyone down, turn off the lights and play the descriptive soundtrack, you see. Absolutely perfect for people who can't stand being alone, for good reason, and can't be asked to read. You look puzzled. Oh, I'll show you what I mean. I put, I put a little, uh, little sample here. Um, no, 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 that's okay. It's okay. No, thank you. No, 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 no. I, I insist. I, it really is no trouble. My God, I love the sound of the old-fashioned cassettes. A bloody modern, what's it, numerical recordings or something? Digital? Of course I did it all. I'm not a complete fool, you know. Right, now close your eyes. I can see you. Close your eyes, please. You're going to be taken on a journey. A lion appears on the screen. An MGM production. <laughs> the lion growled. Now we see a handsome young man laying on his bed asleep. He looks Greek, like George Michael. In the background, there is an open window with a beautiful sea view and a perfect blue sky. The sun is beginning to rise. We hear snoring, but it's not him. Suddenly, the handsome young Greek man's eyes open as if he were awakened by the snoring. He looks to one side, towards the window, and says, Stephas Musos! He sits up quickly, looks down at the rather overweight, pudgy woman laying next to him. 
She looks awfully like Angela Merkel. Gosh, it is Angela Merkel. He jumps out of bed and looks at her again. He slaps his hand over his mouth, as if he were going to be sick. He looks confused as he continues to look at the woman in silence. Hello? Hello? 